Hey y'all, Matt here from Super Niche Sites. In the video today, I'm gonna to be talking about all about how I create a topical cluster or how I'm working to create topical authority on a site. I personally don't believe topical authority has to do with you becoming an authority. I believe it more has to do with how much information you have about a given topic on your site. And there's a lot of people in the SEO industry that believe that, and I've done research on it, seen a lot of different sites on it, and I, I personally feel, just based on my experience, that the way I have been building sites in the past, and I know a lot of people have, they've been hit by updates, and I've had sites as well, and I think that's because of not doing this process correctly. So that's why I wanted to make a video showing you exactly how I'm doing it moving forward. I mentioned in my video last week, if you didn't check that out, I'm starting a brand new case study. This is exactly how I'm doing the topical research for that case study. So that's what I'm gonna be covering in the video today. Before we get to that, please be sure to hit that like button and then subscribe to the channel as well so that way you can get updates on that case study I mentioned last week and also so you can learn the different processes that I'm using going forward. Let's get into it. So this is the example that I used last week in my video. Um, I'm not building a site on gardening, but if I were, this is the type of, uh, the, the way I would do my topical research to figure out what I'm going to write about for the specific site. Now, as you can see here, I am on lowfruits.io, and I currently actually don't have a, play, a paid plan with them. All you have to do is go to reports, and you can create a report for free that gives you all of these different keywords. Now, if you want to get the volume and all this stuff, then you do have to analyze the keywords, which you only get 20, yeah, 25 credits for free, and then you have to pay beyond that. However, I'm just using it to pull in this information. You can also use a tool like the, uh, I think it's SEO Minion, which pulls in everything from the Google Auto Suggests and the Google Related Searches, but I just prefer to have it in a dashboard like this. It makes it considerably easier for me. And what um, Low Fruits does, it shows here right here at the top, um, it allows you, oh, this is if you analyze it, okay, which I'm not doing, but what it does is it pulls in the information um, from like the people also ask and the Google auto suggest and whatever. So I just typed in bush beans into the report and then I've got, um, and it's pulling in all of these that have a max domain authority of 20. Okay, so that's giving me a thousand different keywords. If I wanted to, I believe you can change that um, possibly with the settings and you can play with that here in low fruit. Yeah, you, so you can change your max DA. Um, and then that's just uh, the basic um, if you're going to analyze it and that sort of thing. But so here we're going to look at bush beans. Now, if I was going to start a gardening site and this brand new site that I'm building is not gardening, but I'm using the same process to figure out how to concentrate on a specific topic. I start with a top topic. So that's my entire website topic. Then I go down a level, then I go down a level, and then sometimes, depending on how small that is, I might go down even a level further. So say, for example, I've got a gardening website. There's obviously a ton of different things in gardening. So I could do vegetables, I could do flowers, I could do those sorts of things. But we're just gonna say I'm gonna go from gardening, the main topic, down one level to vegetables. Then I'm gonna go down another level and there's going to be a ton of different vegetables that I could concentrate on. Then I'm gonna go down even a level further Okay, so the, the individual ones, now I'm doing a specific type of the vegetable. So I've got my vegetables, beans, and I'm going down even further to questions or queries about bush beans. Okay, if you're not a gardener, it's a specific style essentially of beans that you can grow in your garden. Now an issue with using low fruits and truthfully any way you do keyword research is sometimes it's gonna pull in irrelevant queries. So what you wanna do is you wanna scroll down here and as you can see, bushes baked beans is a type of um, big beans, obviously bushes. So what you want to do here in low fruits is you want to click on exclude and then I'm going to do baked. Okay. And then I'm going to do, um, let's see, I'm going to do buy because we don't want anything that, that, um, you're actually purchasing. And then we're going to scroll do scroll down here. Okay. Pole beans. And the reason why I'm going to leave this out is I'm going to exclude pole beans is because that would be another cluster that I would add to my site. So again, I'm under beans. And so rather than just doing anything bean, re bean related, I'm looking for bush beans. Then after I finish writing all of this, which I'm gonna say that if I was doing gardening, there's probably hundreds of different queries about bush beans. Then once I'm done with that, then I would go over to pole beans, okay? Then I would do other types of individual beans. I'm not going up to beans yet. Then I might go to uh, kidney beans, or I might go up to pinto beans, or I might go up to all of those and see maybe are there some subsections that I could go into on those as well. Okay, so I'm gonna exclude those. Let's click apply. And then it's gonna recalculate and it will change the number of pages down here. Okay, so I've got 31 pages. Okay, so here's some other ones. 
I've got um, soybeans, so we're going to do that, get rid of that as a negative. So let's do exclude, and let's do soybean. Let's do soybeans, and let's apply that. And it'll pull the erase those out of there, still 31 pages. All right, let's see, what size grow bag, what size pots. All right, where can I plant bush beans? All right, so that's probably okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna filter these out as I go along, okay? Then what I prefer to do, okay, I'm gonna pull out anything that says YouTube on it. I'm gonna exclude that because I'm not actually creating videos for this. If you have a gardening site, you might. Um, but let's just do YouTube as well. Let's get rid of those. And then I always sort, sort by A to Z, okay? And then we're gonna scroll down and there's all sorts of different queries. So I've got our black beans, bush beans, our blue lake bush, bean, bush beans heirloom, okay? What I would recommend you do, this is what I'm doing when I'm building out my topics, is go as far down as you can. So say for example, I've got, well, there's one about there, there's two about that. Okay, blue lake bush beans. So I'm gonna click on include and I'm going to add blue lake and apply. And let's see how many I've got. So okay, so I went from 31 pages down to a single page about blue lake bush beans. Okay, so are they heirloom? Are they stringless? Uh, bush Lake 274 Bush Beans, How to Grow. Okay, so that's three articles. Blue Lake Bush Beans, I'm not gonna target anything with that specifically because I'm going after all these individual ones. Um, Days to Maturity, Growing Guide, 100%, so that makes five articles. Uh, Blue Lake Bush Beans in Containers, that makes it, I think they're trying to ask um, if you can grow them in containers. Then let's keep reading here. Um, spacing, okay, so that makes six. Do they need a trellis, that makes seven. Do they need full sun, that makes eight. Uh, need support, that's gonna be the same as trellis. So I'd make sure in this article, I probably put, do blue, blue lake bush beans need a trellis slash support, okay? So that way includes those two. Um, growing, that'd probably be the same under growing guides. So we're not gonna do that. How big do they get? Okay, we're gonna do that. How to plant them, um, that might be under growing guide um, or how to grow. Okay, those, how to grow and growing guide would probably be the same, um, but we'll see. Um, let's see, we got Kentucky. Okay, so I'm not gonna do that, not gonna do that. Planting. Problems, okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do seven common problems with blue lake bush beans. Tips for growing blue blue lake bush, uh, blue lake bush beans. Again, that one's probably gonna be under the, the growing guide. What are they? Okay, so that's gonna be it. When to harvest, that's gonna be good. Uh, when to pick, that'd be the same as when to harvest. When to plant, I don't think I had that up here. I had talked about planting, but these specific questions. Okay, so that gives a good number of articles to start with. And you see what I did there? I went down a topic. So I started with gardening. I went down to vegetables. I went down to the specific plant, beans. I went down to the specific type of plant, bush beans. And now I went down even one level further to blue lake bush beans. If I had a gardening site, if I was starting a brand new site, this is exactly where I would begin. I would write out all of these articles. So let's say there was 15 of them. I didn't, I didn't keep count. Um, but let's say there was 15 of them. Let's go ahead and count here. So are they heirloom? Are they stringless? Um, how to grow is gonna be under growing guide. All right, so we'll leave that. Um, days to maturity, we'll do the growing guide. In containers, I'm gonna assume it's asking, can you grow them in containers? Um, spacing, we'll do that. Um, need a trellis, need full sun. Support is gonna be the same as trellis. Growing is gonna be the same as up there. How big do they get? How to plant them? That might be under growing, but we might do another one here. So we'll just do that. Planting, problems with, okay. Tips for growing, so that's gonna be under growing guide. What are they, when to harvest, when to pick is the same, when to plant. Okay, so I've got 14 keywords about blue lake bush beans. What do you think Google is going to do when I start a brand new site and the first 14 articles that I write are about blue lake bush beans? Do you think Google is going to think, oh, Matt knows what he's talking about with blue lake bush beans? Yeah, because I'm gonna have 14 articles that are all written, all SEO optimized. As I mentioned in the video last week, I'm gonna be using Page Optimizer Pro to optimize all of my articles on my new site. So I've got 14 articles that are all around this exact same topic. And then on top of that, then they're all interlinked. And then on top of that, the next thing that I'm writing on after I write on Blue Lake Bush Beans is I'm writing on Bush Beans. So let's say that I find after doing these 14 blue, blue lake, blue, man, that's hard I want to say, blue lake bush beans. After finding these 14, I find another variation. So I might do this, and then I might do this, and then I might do this. Maybe there's three or four different types of bush beans, 
And then after that, then I go up a level and then I just write about bush beans. I'm still incredibly niched down and I'm still finding all of those things in the topic, but then I'm interlinking all of the related ones together. So I've got 14 super, super tightly clustered articles on our Blue Lake Bush Beans heirloom, our Blue Lake Bush Beans stringless. And I've got those all tightly woven together on my gardening website. I've got Bush Beans. I've got, and then under that, I've got Blue Lake Bush Beans and then anything else. Okay, so let's get rid of include and let's dive a little bit deeper into this. All right, so we check some of these. We're gonna uncheck and yeah, we'll just do, we'll leave it, that's fine. Okay, so let's scroll down here. All right, so our bush bean leaves edible, okay? So what, I, what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna go leaves. Okay, let's see if that comes up with. Our bush bean leaves edible, okay, so we've only got a few, okay? So that's probably okay. I might go ahead and do these, but I'm just looking up different types. See if I can find something like Blue Lake just by scrolling through here. Um, companion plants, all right, so our bush beans and pepper, peppers companion plants, our bush beans and tomatoes companion plants. All right, so let's do companion, and let's see what that comes up with. Okay, so we've only got a few. So best companion plants, bush beans and onion companion plants, bush beans and tomatoes, companion plants for bush beans. So I'd probably write one article about this, best, or bush beans, and, or there we go, best companion plants for bush beans. And then I probably put these as subheadings or even as FAQs at the bottom. So our bush beans and peppers companion plants, or our bush beans and tomatoes, bush beans and onions, um, and then use these as like subheadings. So that'd be like one article there for companion, okay? And that's why when you start off with a thousand keywords, I think, or 747 now it is, Okay, so I've got 747 keywords. You're probably only gonna write, say, 100 because there's a lot of these that are gonna be one article that you're writing. Okay, there's a lot of these that are gonna be like that. Let's keep looking here. Are bush beans BPA-free? I don't know if that's talking about actual bush beans or bushes beans, um, like bushes baked beans, so I'm probably not gonna write that article if it's not clear. Are bush beans annual per perennials? Okay, that's gonna be a great article to write. Let's scroll down here. Are they cold hardy? Okay, that's gonna be a great one to write. Um, determinant, don't even know what that means. Uh, let's see what Google says about that. Common beans described as bush are determinant plants. Okay, so it's actually asking a specific question about uh, type of plants. Uh, can you tell I'm not a gardener? All right, so easy to grow, that'd be a good one. Edible would be a good one. Frost tolerant, that'd probably be the same as cold hardy, so that'd be one article. Um, again, are they gluten free? I don't know if they're talking about the actual beans or bushes baked beans, so I'm not gonna write that. Same thing, are bush beans good? Um, are bush beans good for dogs? Again, don't know exactly if they're talking about bushes, baked beans, or regular bush beans, so I'm just not gonna write it. Are bush beans green beans? I'm gonna write that. Are bush beans healthy? Again, not gonna write it. Um, are bush beans heavy feeders? I believe that's talking about the plant. Let's just go ahead and see. Okay, what for all has increased the growth rate of bean plants? Okay, so that is that is talking about um, actual bush bean plants. So then I would write that. Let's go here, go to the next one. Our bush beans, uh, legumes, I think it's how it's pronounced. Um, nitrogen fixers, non-GMO, perennial, self-pollinating. Are they string beans? Are they stringless? Okay, that'd be the same article. Self-pollinating would be um, probably under the companion plants we had are the annual perennial on the previous page. So as you can see, when going through and creating your, or looking for your different topics, that's how I am doing it going forward on my brand new site that I mentioned in last week's video about the case study that I'm gonna be performing. Um, I'm going through and using low fruits like this and creating these clusters that are super tight knit that I can interlink all together. Now here's the thing, when you're doing this, this is super time consuming, but the only alternative to this is paying someone to create maybe a topical map. There's not really um, any good courses that I've, that I've heard of anybody saying. Um, there's some courses that are like, oh, this is a topical authority course and blah, blah, blah. But anyone can say that exactly what it covers though is hard to know. And topical authority right now is the big thing. Topical maps is a big thing. There's places that are selling single topical maps for 400, 500 or more dollars for a single topical map. So say for example, you give them this keyword bush beans, they'll create the topical map for you for $400. And essentially what they're doing is they're just going through and pulling in all of this information and then using a tool to combine it. Now, if you if you watch Matt Diggity at all, he does uh, talk about how he um, has done this in the past manually. And what they'll do is what he um, has done is he'll use SEO Minion 
to pull in the people also asked. And he also pulls in um, information from like Wikipedia and those sorts of things, all of these different uh, terms, um, Google auto suggests, the related terms at the bottom of the page, all those sorts of things. And then he'll put it into Keyword Cupid and Keyword Cupid will do that. But Keyword Cupid is a paid tool. I prefer to use as many free tools as possible. And I'm good with just doing it this way. This is going to give me way, way, way more articles than I could ever write in a year even, or maybe in half a year. I don't know. I don't know exactly how far it's going to be. Okay, but here we've got our Bush's Grilling Beans Vegan. Okay, so what I'm probably going to do is, let's see if I can exclude Bush's with the, with the uh, possessive. And let's see what that does. Okay. So that took out a couple more pages, okay? Best bush beans for Texas, for zone eight, for raised beds. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and create a list, which you could go through and you can select all of these for pages. Um, and then you can add to list, you can unselect them, you can hide them, you can um, do whatever you want here. And you can also, if you wanna export all keywords in the XLS, it's only one credit. So you can just export all these keywords for one credit, which you start with 25 for free. So you can do this 25 different times. And then you just put it into, let's say a Google Doc, Doc or a Google Sheet, and you can sort it, you can erase the ones that you don't need, and then you can just go through and create your own. And to me, it's better than paying $400 for somebody to essentially do this using their programs. So this is how I'm going through and creating what I believe is a topical cluster. It's not necessarily a topical map. And I'm doing really basic interlinking. As I said, I'm just interlinking all of the ones that are in the same category. So all those blue lake ones are gonna be linked together. If I've got anything else, um, anything else like that, another type of bush beans, I'm gonna link all of those together. Um, and so that's what I would recommend doing. I'm just doing more of a flat linking structure rather than doing the silo type linking structure for my topical authority. I hope that this video has been helpful to you in answering some questions about how I'm planning on doing this going forward and why I'm doing this going forward. And as I mentioned in the video last week, this is the exact process I'm going to be using for the case study that I will be putting out monthly. So if you're watching one of my case study videos, this is exactly how I am doing my topical research, my keyword research. I'm just going all in on this. I'm not doing any, um, I'm not doing any competitor research, truthfully. I'm just going all in on all of these and I'm building it out as much as possible starting at the bottom and then working my way up slowly as I move along as the site grows and I truthfully believe this is one helpful to more people because anyone who wants to know any information about bush beans let's say for example if I had a gardening site they're gonna come to my site and they're gonna find hundreds of articles about bush beans rather than just a few that I that I found that were low competition and so I think that's going to help a lot of people. And also I believe that will help Google to understand that, hey, this website is more of an authority on this because instead of just having a few articles, they have a hundred articles. And instead of just being about gardening, there are a hundred articles about bush beans. And so then Google's gonna rank me really, really well for bush beans. And then if I move over to pole beans, then Google's gonna rank me really, really well for pole beans. And then as I move up to the other different types of beans, it will be the exact same process over and over and over and over and over again. So it's not like I'm just going really, really wide, wide. I feel like Google wants us as bloggers to go really, really narrow and really, really deep. And then when we come up and finish that one, then move on to the next one. I really think of it as like laying a foundation for a house. Some houses that you just put them on a slab and they're done. Whereas other houses, skyscrapers, those sorts of things, what they do is they drive down these pilings really, 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 really deep into the ground. And why do they do that? To secure them. And I think that's what building these really narrow clusters, these whatever you want to call it, topical authority, I don't, I don't care what semantics you want to use for it, but these narrow funnels of content that cover everything, like I want to be, if there's any question about, if I was the gardening site, I don't know if there's any question about bush beans, I want to show up as number one for that. And so every single thing I'm ranking number one for that. And then I'm gonna get links. Naturally, maybe, because I'm already ranking number one, so people are gonna start linking to my site, but I, all of them are gonna be super relevant to bush beans because that's the first 100 or 150 articles I wrote about. Whereas if I just wrote about gardening, I've got, five articles about garden hose and five articles about garden shovels and I've got five articles about wheelbarrows and five articles about this, five articles about that. I'm gonna get links from like all sorts of different things and Google's like, 
All right, well, he's got two links that point to the talk about wheelbarrows, and he's got two links to talk about flowers, and two links to talk about beans, and whereas in this, all of the links I'm getting all at once are all going to be about bush beans. And then when I'm done with that and I move on to pole beans, it's still super tight related. So those those uh, links that I've got that talk about bush beans and now talking about pole beans, Google's not going to be like, oh man, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It's going to be another thing and it's going to be holding up the foundation of the blog. And that's why I'm going this route. I really feel like this is the wave of the future. I really feel like this is what Google wants us as bloggers to go about. Plus, I really think if AI does affect things in the future, which is possible, I think building it like this will help you. You get a reader to come to your site who's interested in bush beans and they're going to be clicking through to multiple different articles rather than coming for one article, not being able to find anything else about that and then bouncing and going back to Google. Much better to have a massive cluster or content silo or whatever you want to call it in my opinion, to have that. And then once you finish one, then move on to the next and then move on to the next. And that's what I'm doing with my websites now and going forward with this new case study website that I mentioned in the video last week as well. Again, my name is Matt. I'm from Super Niche Sites. I do hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone might have as well. Have a great rest of your day.